What's, What's up, up guys? guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. And, I'm Lex. and if you guys are brand new here, please make sure you are going and hitting that subscribe button down below as well as turning on your notifications so you get notified every single time we post a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be eating. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say eating David Dobrik. <laughs> In today's video, we are going to be doing a mukbang as well as discussing the whole David Dobrik situation that happened over the course of about two weeks, mm -hmm. as well as giving a review on the new popcorn chicken pizza from Pizza Hut. Ooh, it looks so good, guys. Honestly, I can't wait to open it up. It mm. smells good. We should just show them. Yeah. This you wanna is, see it? This is what it looks like right now but bam look at that it looks so delicious what did you say there's on there uh corn, corn chicken but popcorn chicken yeah mm -hmm. it looks more promising it looks so good but that is what we are doing today let's get right into it slice so for those of you who don't know about the allegations that have come up against David Dobrik and the vlog squad um, they have not only been super serious but they're very controversial and we are going to be putting a warning up because we will be talking about certain things in this video that may trigger some survivors or some people who have been through traumatic experiences so Here's a warning, if you guys feel that any of these types of discussions are going to trigger you, please exit the video now. If not, join us in the conversation. It's gravy. Huh? It's gravy, dude. Inside, it's gravy. What do you mean it's great? Oh, it is good. So a few weeks ago, allegations have come out from multiple sources, including certain women for and allegations, not specifically that of David Dobrik being the one who has done this, but he has allowed them within his videos and on his platform. Not only is this super serious, but it's also something that is super upsetting to me because I used to be a really big fan of his. One of my friends introduced me to him a while ago and I just couldn't help but I guess watch his videos back to back for hours sometimes just because I loved it so much and I always wanted to wonder what it would like to have that type of friend group. And then it wasn't until last year when I actually introduced David Dobrik to Alex because even though he knew his name, he didn't watch a lot of his content. But how do you feel since finding out about David Dobrik and now this situation coming up? after only being a fan of his for such a small amount of time compared to me. Literally like three months, not even. I know. It's kind of weird because I wanted to keep watching his old vlogs, but now I'd feel weird watching them because I don't know what could have like gone, gone on behind yeah. that. And he's just showing what he wants to show. Mm -hmm. When I first watched the very first apology that he put out, I was appalled. I was just blown away by him not only posting on his smallest channel thinking that nobody would watch it, but also turning off his likes and his comments so he wouldn't get a backlash is just, it's insulting to all of his I miss fans. The, I missed the mark on that one. Honestly, <laughs> oh my God, was I was thing. fuming. Like. I missed the mark. Dude, you missed more than the mark. <laughs> you missed the entire thing complete. You missed the apology. Like He was just talking about his sponsorships. He was just talking about himself. All the stuff that he made was quite in like interesting nonetheless, but... When something like that is covered up so deep that it only comes out now because he had such like a power of authority over people that he, I guess he didn't even realize because he admitted that in the video saying mm -hmm. he never realized that was the power that he had, which... 
I find very naive of him to say. I was about to say, that's probably one of the dumbest things he, he I know. Says. Like, like, come on, oh, you should know. I You're was, like a millionaire, dude. I was there, I was in and out. I didn't know what he was doing. You think you don't have control over people? Come on. That is so, like, naive to say. It's stupid. It just, I don't know. It just sounds very manipulative, the way that the first apology came out. And then after everyone flooded YouTube and social media about how angry they were with the first apology video. You had, you felt obligated to make another one that was more real. But it wasn't even the fact that it was more real. I find like the only reason he made it was because he was losing all of his sponsorships and a bunch of his followers and people who he was collaborating with, where he was getting most of his money from. Mm -hmm. He lost the own business that he was a part in making. Like that's that, sad. That's stupid. That's sad. When we first found out about it, actually, on uh, <clears throat> social media, we unfollowed, unsubscribed to all of his accounts because just hearing about something like that, you don't want to support the person that was a part of that. Especially when it was somebody who we looked up to as yeah. someone who was I genuine. Thought he was, and... I thought it was like, he was a cool, fun guy. And then yeah. when someone comes up, obviously, it's going to change your perspective of, of, uh, of the person. Yeah. But it's just sad to know that, too, because, like, David Dobrik is our age group. I'm pretty sure he's my age. I think he's 24, 25, something like that. I think something like that. Mm -hmm. And for me, just seeing that and seeing how he was able to make something of himself in our age group mm -hmm. is is something to look up to. And especially when he portrays himself on camera as this nice, caring guy who's there for everybody else. You know what I mean? And then hidden underneath all of that is just this extreme need and want for content in order to please other people. And he doesn't even realize that he's hurting people in the process. And he would still set these things up for the video. Mm -hmm. But he would be so skewed in his thinking. Are you talking about the allegation video? Not even just that one. The one where he, he made his friends kiss or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the gorilla suit. Seth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like... What made you, what would make you think that that's a good idea? None of it was a good idea. That's what I mean, though. Especially when you tell somebody that you're doing something completely different. Like, that not only is, for some people, traumatizing, and, like, lo you lose trust in somebody, mm -hmm. but that's also something that is considered... Mm -hmm. And he, I'm pretty sure he needed to go to therapy for that, and... He reached out to people to help him and I just mm -hmm. felt so bad because he didn't care and the video still went up and everything happened and I believe it got taken down after a while but still. That's the other thing actually I'm watching both of his apology videos. <clears throat> He's like oh somebody asked me to take it down blah 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 I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But then in another video he says like he ignored them mm -hmm. which contradictory that's another thing that got kind of got me mad mm -hmm. i'm like this guy seems so fun and cool but it's definitely just a front and then there was another part in the second one of the apology where he said he should have been in that room and he should have made sure nothing wrong was going on and whatever we're going in and out dude for those girls with that rape allegation video with dirty dom no you shouldn't have been in that room and those girls shouldn't have been in that room and they shouldn't have been wasted out of their minds to the point where they couldn't control what was going on you should have been aware that that was a bad situation. Like, if you were anybody else, you would be in jail right now. Because I'm pretty sure those girls would have been more comfortable coming forward. But because his name is on that, they feel like they they had to allow it to, to go through for the video. Kind of delegating to another aspect of our video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this pizza is actually kind of sick. Although I will admit, the gravy interesting yeah you don't see it it's not like ground up gravy all over your pizza like it's just yeah like there's no tomato sauce on this it looks it's like actually just like bread you see it's that? just like a gravy that's inside of it Can't i even... think they probably do like a thin coat and then they put the cheese on with the corn or whatever but it's still delicious it's kind of like a oh, like an easter or thanksgiving dinner on a pizza it's like something your brother would make Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just like missing the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Should have gotten French fries. Honestly, at this point. <laughs> put that yeah. on there. I want to finish the crust. 
after looking back at his channel as well, and all the other old videos he's done with all those what could have been considered uh, harmless squad. pranks and whatnot that he's done. From the vlog squad? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, it, it reinforces my point as to why pranks, I don't think, are a good thing to post for content. Because you can get a lot of backlash, not just in the moment. Like, there's super innocent pranks that you can do on somebody. Right. And but, then there's ones that are just pushing the limit and, like... You just lose all respect. Which he, which he did. Mm -hmm. He ended up pushing the limit on it. And that's what I mean. It's like, there's a fine line for having pranks. And we've said this a million times, not just on our YouTube videos, but on our TikTok lives. Mm -hmm. We hate that kind of stuff because it's just, it, get, it can get so toxic. And toxic couple culture and toxic friend culture manipulates audiences to think that things like that are okay and mm -hmm. it makes you think that they're funny so when you do it to other people you think that it's just for the laugh but it's actually seriously hurting There's and possibly traumatizing someone yeah especially somebody that you love or sh are supposed to love that's not cool and some people will turn around to this and say oh well you just don't have thick enough skin or like you just no. can't take a joke but some things for a lot of people are not just it's it's all just not a joke the last thing that we ever actually said to David at all was on our TikTok account before we unfollowed him. And we wrote back underneath his last video. If you guys go to his TikTok, you'll see what last video it is there because he's come out in his recent apology of seven minutes to say he's taking a step back after getting all emotional. Um, and all we left on there was, we have unfollowed, have never been more disappointed in a creator that we once looked up to so much. And we left it at that. He really needs to realize that he's lost a very large amount of his fan base and a lot of people have lost a lot of respect for him. And not only that, I think that he should also get some help probably because anybody who's allowed these things to go on through his life and with the people around him, I think has also meant he has suffered some type of emotional trauma himself. Mm -hmm. And that may just be me trying to justify something. Probably. But I find that we still don't know what's happened behind camera through his life. We've only seen what he's put out for us and to see. And we only know what he's ever spoken about. And what the people yeah. that are a part of his old inner circle spoke about. Yeah. I really think that he just needs to seriously take a step back for a while and not just a little time period. And not only think about what he's allowed, but what he's allocated as okay based off of what he's put out to his fans. Because then you have a fan base that thinks, oh, if David Dobrik can do it, then I can do it and it's okay and it's funny. And that's just opening up a huge can of worms and a large amount of people to take things like and, and the mistreatment of friends as something normal and it shouldn't be. My final note on the subject is I hope that all the people, not just his family, his friends, but the actual victims within those videos that mm -hmm. were too scared to speak up or, you know, they weren't really shown in those videos, but something did happen behind the scenes. I hope that everything ends up working in their favor. For David, I agree with Chris. Just go away for like a year or two from everything and really reflect on everything that you've done because you've been creating content for so many years and there's so much to reflect upon just to recollect your thoughts and just be a better person and just be aware of the people you're with and what you are, you know, able to, I can't think of the word right now. How you're able to affect other people. Yeah. Influence. Influence. There you go. Influence. <laughs> influence. Because you you got a high status in social media. And mm -hmm. with that, you got to be aware of what's going on and with the people you bring in. And as for the survivors of all of these traumatic incidences who have had to go through therapy or who have not been able to speak out, I am also a survivor myself, and I stand with you and love you all and respect you all for coming forward, no matter how hard it may have been. I know that 
things like this are not easy to talk about, especially to the public eye. And with him being such a high recognized person, I not only applaud you all, I really believe that you all will find justice in whatever has happened to all of you. Here on YouTube, we always find that having a mukbang to talk about issues like this or just talking about tea in general is normally the best and easiest way to go because it allows you to have a space in between in order to not only talk about what you want to talk about, but also enjoy something delicious at the same time while you're, you know, in conversation. And um, this pizza itself is super awesome. If you guys are around a pizza hut, please make sure to go and try the new popcorn chicken pizza. They are working and collaborating with KFC right now and it is absolutely delicious. It's like Thanksgiving in your mouth without the potatoes. If you want them, go get some french fries and put them on top. I think that would be immaculate. Probably tastes better. Yeah. This video is definitely different from anything else that we've posted on our channel in the two years that it's been around. But, you know, it's just something that needed to be discussed. However, in the coming week it is Easter and we will be back in two weeks with another video continuing with our Monday schedule. We're going to be taking the time just for next week to spend with our families for Easter as we will be celebrating on our own as COVID is still out and around. But we just wanted to say before we leave that remember everything that you do can affect somebody else. So please stay humble and stay respectful and keep love in your minds always. We love you guys and we will see you in the next video. video.